Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, today's uh, slightly off-center video, you have all of the series that I need to complete, that I'm in the middle of, sort of, or have read the first book of. These are the books. Let me try that intro again. I'm gonna leave this clip in though. These are all the series that I've read at least one book in, rated at least four stars, and started prior to watching booktube. That's a mouthful. However, there's a lot of series over here, and the reason for the odd angle is because I set them up over to this side. I've got some puzzles blocking sides over there, so I can't push them anymore that way. Most of these series, all of these series, are middle grades or young adult, and most of them are young adult. So a portion of these series come from my own personal interests, things that I was getting into or I was reading as I was transitioning out of the age group of young adult, but not out of reading it, because at that point I was getting my teaching degree and I was going to be teaching English potentially to middle schoolers. And so I thought that I should read some of these. I'm going to move that. Otherwise it looks like I have a weird hat. So a lot of these I started then. Then over the years, there were a few of these series that I started because the first or second book was on the SCASL list that I read as I was teaching. I thought when I made my series to start in 2023 that it was weighted way too heavily on adult fiction series. There's not a single adult series on this list over here on these piles that I'm pointing to that you can't see not a single one. I was not really reading a lot of that at all, except for history. So without further ado, I'm going to talk briefly about these books. Not going to go into full depth synopses for some of these. It's been a decade since I read the book. So it would be really difficult for me to remember a synopsis and or look them up and try to talk about them. I have put them into approximate categories, starting with middle grade categories and then going into young adult. Obviously, it's mostly sci-fi, although there is a chunk of dystopian type books in young adult that started around the era of Hunger Games, my first stint in teaching. Some of these books I own copies of and I plan to own them. I've gotten them secondhand through thrift books, etc. And there is a high chance that I will read another one of the books in the series and go, yeah, it's not for me and not continue the series. And then I would end up DNFing the series. Ultimately, I think that's what I need to do with some of these because this would be a lot of books to get through. I'm going to film another video with all the series I started since watching booktube, most of them because of booktube, although a couple of them are because of the SESL list. Without further ado, let's get into the books because I have 22 series to talk about. So first off, let's start with middle grade. And I'm going to start with historical fiction because I have two of those. One of them being one of the earliest series that I have ongoing that I never continued with. That is the Al Capone series. This was a book that was one of the required readings for the middle grades literature literature course that I took when I was getting my master's in teaching. This is set around the time when Al Capone was at Alcatraz and the main character, his family, I think his father goes out to be a warden and he interacts and I don't know that he interacts directly with Al Capone, but that is the setup for it. And it's sort of the hook to get you into the book. There are several in here, several more than when I read this, because I believe this was the only one published when I read it. That's how long ago I read this. The other historical fiction book and the only other historical fiction book that I have on this list is The Rock and the River by Kikla Magoon. This is an amazing book. The reason I read this book is because when I was looking for decorations for my classroom, when I taught at a Title I middle school, I realized that a lot of the book posters that I was looking at, they were very classic. They were very white. They didn't reflect the lived experiences of my students. And so I started looking for award winners uh, like the Coretta Scott King Award winners, the Pura Bele Award winners, and other books like that. And I looked for all those books. I put up all those posters and then I decided, you know what? If I have those posters up on my wall, I need to read the books. This was one of the posters I put up. 
it's incredible. This book stars a boy whose name I don't remember, but his father was uh, a preacher that was high up in the organization with MLK. I don't know if that is a fictionalized person or not, but it goes along with those scenarios. And this boy has to deal with, he has to choose between, does he do the nonviolence of what his father says, and what MLK says, or the more violent tendencies which his brother or his older brother is tending towards. I thought for a long time this was a standalone. There is a companion novel that is called Fire in the Streets and I believe it's set around the same time and it stars one of the secondary characters from this book. Next we move into middle grade contemporary. One of these I'm not sure if it is contemporary or not. I put it in there because it seems like it's not set specifically in a historical time period but and honestly this is one of the ones that I don't remember a lot about and it is three times lucky this is more of like uh, a girl who's who lives out in I think Mississippi it's a little bit of a mystery type tale this is definitely one that I need to get a refresher on before I continue then we have one that I am shocked that I can did not continue with and I didn't really enjoy as much as I th thought I did until I started learning more and then reading new from here. That is Front Desk by Kelly Yang. I definitely need to read the other books in this series. Pretty much I want to read all of Kelly Yang's backlist. The main character here, whose name, again, I forget. I'm not good long-term memory-wise remembering these names. Her parents are Chinese immigrants and they run a motel. They don't own it, but they run it. And this motel is sort of like a long-term living type of motel and she deals with a lot of different prejudice and incidents and things that happen in a life in this real scenario. This is I think somewhat autobiographical just like new from here. So I need to purchase this book and I need to read this series. Then we move into middle grade fantasy and the first of those is the first of a duology. It's called A Tale of Two Castles. I used to read a lot of Gail Carson Levine as I was growing up. She was one of the authors that did a lot of the Dear America I believe and there was a time back when I first started Goodreads that I put a lot of her backlist on my Goodreads to read list and when I was going through some of those older books I decided to check this one out. So this is an older book but I read it because you know of a long time ago and it was just really cute and fun and it's just the first in a duology and I need to finish it up. Then we have the first in a much longer series. Well this is actually I believe the second because I don't own the first and this is The Sisters Grimm and all of the titles are puns on different things and I believe it's probably ripoffs of fairy tales I own the rest of the series. I probably should go ahead and get the first one, but I'll get the first one only if I end up reading the rest of the series. It's nine books long. Then we have another series that I can't remember why I put it on the list, but as soon as I read it, I put the rest of the series on the list. I just never got around to reading them. That is Fable Haven by Brandon Mall. The kids, I believe, go to stay with a family member, and it turns out that there is this secret world that's sort of attached to the house that they're caretakers of and they're not supposed to know but they stumble over there and they become involved in this whole big deal. So I really am intrigued in getting to the rest of them. Coffee break. Next we have the last middle grade book and it is the only middle grade sci-fi and that is uh, Space Case. I don't remember what the name of the uh, I think the original book and the name of the series is Moon Base Alpha and I picked this one up because of one of my students. They were reading the first book and they really enjoyed it and I thought oh okay let me try that out and it was really neat and imaginative. So they're setting up this base on the moon. Something goes wrong and it's gonna get abandoned but some of them are left behind or almost left behind. Again, I need to refresh my memory on this before I continue on with the series. I believe it's a trilogy. Now we get into the young adult books and I'm going to start with the contemporary with one that's sort of magical realism and then you'll see what that is by the end of it. The first of those is a trilogy. I thought it was a standalone. I think it 
could stand as a standalone and I was actually surprised with how much I like it because it's a bit of a romance book and that is Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. There's also Love and Luck and then Love and Olives I believe so it's you know Luck it's in Ireland, Olives it's in Greece, the, uh, Gelato is in Italy all these different love stories. I'm surprised that I like it. This one has a high chance of getting Dan Eft, but I have fond memories of this book. This next one was a very hard hitting book that I thought was a standalone and I read because of the SCASL list. That is Jane Anonymous by Lori Fania Stoles. This involves a girl who was taken captive and held captive for months and I believe she develops a little bit of Stockholm Syndrome but I can't remember. There is a follow-up to this book but I think it would be worth it to reread this book before reading the follow-up. This next book the library didn't have the first in the series and it was a long hold so I just went ahead and got this one. I enjoyed it and I'm thinking that I want to try more of this genre, more of the mystery genre because I enjoyed it when I was a kid. There were a lot of those that I loved. I mean Nancy Drew was one of the first series that got me into reading and that is the Truly Devious series. This is I believe book two but I don't remember. The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. There are now five books in this series. The fifth book just came out. There's a trilogy and then like two add-ons that aren't directly connected to the series but they follow Stevie. And so Stevie is this girl who really loves solving true crime and she's passionate for it and that's why she gets invited to this prestigious school and she's working on it but then there's this mystery that surrounded the origins of the school and she gets wrapped up in that mystery as well as another mystery that starts while she's there. So I'm surprised that I remember so much about these books but I'm really intrigued to get to the rest of this. It was a fun read. Lastly is the magical realism. I wouldn't say this is hard fantasy but this is big just about everywhere on booktube and in book boxes and etc. And that is the Raven Cycle. This is the Raven Boys, the first in that series. I don't remember what my review said originally but I am intrigued enough that I know for a fact this type of series I will need to reread the original book but I never continued in it. There are just so many of these series that I started around that time that because of Allegiant I never continued and I would have been better off continuing then. So I will probably need to reread this one to read the rest of the series. Next we get into fantasy books although one of them is more superhero-ish so I probably could have categorized that in sci-fi but I'll leave it in this category. The first of those is Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Roche. This is what my recent uh, haul books, my Christmas haul that just went up. This is the realm is divided into seasons and one of the seasons was just recently destroyed but there were a handful of survivors and this is telling their story. I'm intrigued enough. I remember this enough fondly. I don't know that I would go back and reread it. That's my thing. I don't actually reread a lot of books because there's so many that I want to read but I might be compelled to do this for a lot of these series because I don't want to waste time trying to figure out what was it that went on in the first book before I get to them. This is another one that I will probably need to reread. This is the Winners Trilogy by Marie Rakowski. Probably one of the reasons that I never got back to this are these covers. I hate this style cover. This does not scream fantasy to me but it is and it's one that I don't remember the synopsis very well. Then we have this is I don't believe the first book but I always get confused about the order of these books. When I was picking this off my shelf at my classroom library uh, it does look like a library copy because I bought it second hand. Um, I think the first book is actually Reckless but it's called A Mirror World. It's the Mirror World series by Cornelia Funke. Cornelia Funke is best known for her Inkheart trilogy which I adore even with what she did with one of the characters in the the last book of the trilogy. Um, Inkheart has been turned into a movie. Wasn't necessarily the best but I adore those books and those editions. These are translated from the German. I don't know if Cornelia Funke is writing more books or not and so it's a little bit more difficult to get some of these books and I believe I got up to the third book in this 
but I was didn't know how much of the series there was. This is one of the ones where he can travel through, the main character can travel through a mirror. He is sort of engaging in sort of illicit rage just to keep things going. His brother follows him through and then gets bitten by some sort of monster in this world and starts turning into this jade monster, basically. And it's all about the brother who was sort of morally gray trying to solve this, trying to fix and help the brother who was supposedly all good. This is one, because I enjoy Cornelia Funke's writing so much, that I probably would reread the whole series before I got to it. And the third and fourth books, my sister actually got me for Christmas. The next is another famous series. The last book in this series it came out recently. It's an older series, so I believe there is a gap in publishing. Again, it's one that I read the first book of. I don't remember why I picked it up. Never continued in it. I believe these read more as companions. So what I will do, it's the Graceling series. I got the graphic novel in a book haul, so I'll probably read the graphic novel of Graceling first before I go on to the rest of the series. This is a fantasy world where they uh, each get these graces or different powers, says Graceling. Terrible synopsis, but what can you do when you've read these books so long enough, so long ago, and you haven't continued with them? The last of these is the series that's the superhero type series, and I didn't continue necessarily because I wasn't, mm, I wasn't sure about the premise the superhero idea, not because it's a bad book, because I really enjoy the author, and that is Renegades, almost hit myself with it, by Marissa Meyer. This is a huge book, but having just read the Gilded Duology, I think that I will enjoy these books, and I remember enough about the setup. There's superheroes, but supposedly all bad ones, and some good ones, and but are the good ones really good? Are the bad ones really bad? and there's Starcross Lovers in between. I remember enough of it that I think I can pick up without having read the first book again. Coffee break. Speaking of Marissa Meyer, we have what is decidedly a sci-fi book and the only pure sci-fi book on here, or series, I should say, and that is The Lunar Chronicles. I really enjoyed this. I read this far more recently and I think it was in an effort to clear off my to read list. This is one that I put on the list because one of my former students highly enjoyed this book and raved about it. I'm like, okay, I'll give that a try. And then I read it and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. The need to continue was not urgent. So I didn't pick up the rest of the books immediately, but this is one where I have all of the books in the series, not the novellas, but I don't always get those in series. So I am hopefully going to complete this series this year. The rest of them are all sort of dystopian novels because there are four more and I did go through a dystopian phase. So the next one is Spliced and I do not remember whether this is the first book in the series or not, but the idea with this is I think that people can get different genetic things spliced into their DNA and there are things that happen because of that and I think there's some sort of government issues etc. Fairly typical for what you have with a YA dystopian. Next we have The Young Elites by Marie Lu. I for a while was working my way through two of Marie Lu's series. The other one was The Talon and enough has passed enough time has passed that I don't remember a lot of them. So I think, I think because I don't really remember a lot about the first two books in this series that to complete this trilogy, I will go back and read the first two books. If I end up remembering things that happen, I may just go ahead and skip to the last one. But this again is the first one and I've actually had it for a while. And this comes from my classroom shelves. So it's one that I've had there. Next we have one. It's an interesting story for how I originally read this. I don't remember how I got a hold of the audiobook because I wasn't necessarily always an audiobook person, especially before they became incredibly portable, like with the advent of Audible and everything. But there was a family beach trip that we took 
2013, 2014, something like that. And I took my cousin, who is about 10 years younger than me, and his sister, my other cousin, who is, she was born my junior year of high school, so significantly younger. And she's now a junior or senior in college. I can't even remember anymore. And, but then she was very young and this is a fairly sheltered side of my family. And we listened to this on audiobook on the way down to the beach. And there were times where <laughs> my cousin and I, the older one, were like, mm, should she be listening to this? I'm not so sure about that. And we're like, he was like, don't tell mom that you listen to this. The Maze Runner uh, by James Ashner. I really enjoyed the audiobook version and I enjoyed my experience enough reading it with them that even if it's cliche, I will at least give the, another, the next book another shot. I've heard that they go downhill, so it may be one that I DNF, but I really want to try to finish this series. I should have said the one with the funny story until last, but the last one I have is actually Nemesis, but I don't have the first book. This is one of the later books in that series, and Project Nemesis, I believe that these people, the, this was a book that I read because of SCSL. And I really wasn't sure, especially when I first started, because these are, I believe, like assassins or some sort of superhuman sort of person created, but they keep getting killed, but coming back to life. And, but they feel all the pain, but they're supposed to do something special. I believe that's this one. And because I don't remember enough of it, I may go have to ba go back and read the first one. So there we go. There are the 20 series that I have that I need to read and I am not going to try to hold all of these up. That would be sort of a disaster in the making. I'm going to use the shelf behind me instead, I'm going to try to stack up as many as them of them as I can. In the second part of this video series, you will have all the series that I have started since starting booktube. There will be some adult fantasy on that list. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.